Are you new to digital painting, feeling a little lost and confused? Well, don't worry. In this video series, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about digital painting so that you can master it all fast. I'm going to show you first exactly how to set up your software and tools so you don't feel lost. And my big promise to you is that you'll be able to create your first painting or your first masterpiece in less than an hour, even if you never painted before. Let's get started. Hi, my name is David Beliveau. Welcome to the ultimate beginner's guide to digital painting. In this first video, we will talk about the interface of the software, canvases and document, and the basic navigation so you can start right away. Now, I'll be using Photoshop for this series, but all basic tools you need for digital painting exist in any software. You'll be able to follow no matter if you are using Procreate, Krita, or any other software. The interface may look a little different, but the same tools will be available in the software of your choice. And we will finish the series with an exercise specially designed to make sure you can practice and understand the topics covered in this series. So let's jump right in. So if it's not done yet, you can go ahead and open Photoshop. First thing first, let's start by creating a new document. You can create a new document by going over File, New, and this window should appear. At the top of this window, you'll have the tab called Recent, where you'll find the previous document size you opened before with Photoshop. If it's the first time you open Photoshop, then you won't have anything here. Then the Save tab is a document you have saved. Again, if you never used Photoshop before, you won't see anything here. The rest of them are pre-made canvases for different usage, all pretty straightforward so far. What you really need to know here is this section called Preset Details. This section will be pretty similar to every and any software you may be using. Here you'll be able to give a name to your document, choose the width, the height, the resolution, and the color mode. I usually don't give it a name yet, as I can choose a name later when I'll save the document. So I will first decide of the width and the height of my canvas. A pretty standard paper size in the US is the letter size, which is 8.5 inches by 11. Now your Photoshop may say something different than inches here, but you can change it by clicking it and selecting the right one. We won't be using the artboard function, so make sure it's not selected. For the resolution, I'm going to make it simpler for you. You only have to remember two numbers, 72 and 300. These numbers represent the amount of pixels per inch, or PPI, on your screen, and ultimately the resolution of your canvas. The higher the number, the greater the resolution. You can choose 72 if you are creating an artwork that goes only online, as the screen resolution only allows 72 pixels per inch, and choose 300 if you are planning on printing your art. Make sure to have the pixel inches selected even if you are using the metric system. This way you'll have the right resolution. Always use RGB mode even if you are planning on printing it. The RGB stands for red, blue and green and is a screen color mode where CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and key which is black and is a printing color mode. I'm recommending that you always use RGB even if you want to print your artwork later. The reason is because, first of all, you'll be able to change from RGB to CMYK later on, and secondly, by using RGB, you'll have access to more tools to create your image than CMYK. So go ahead and choose RGB. The background content is the color of your canvas. White will do for now. If you know you'll be using this format over and over again, you can go ahead and click the Save button, which will place this template into your Save tab. And if not, you can simply click Create. Okay, let's jump right in with the software interface. Now, obviously my interface being Photoshop, this precise interface will be proper to Photoshop, but all software have things in commons and the panels you'll need will be similar no matter which software you are using. They might look a little different, but they'll have the same functions. When you'll open your software for the first time, you'll have a few panels already open, but we won't use them all. So to make things clearer for you, I'll first close all these panels by dragging them and closing them one by one. And then I'll open only the ones I need. You'll be able to find all the panels necessary under the Window tab. You'll need first the Tools panel, in which you'll find all the tools you'll use in this series and much more. Each tools have individual options that appears at the top once you select them. 
We will cover them in time, but for now, no need to worry about them. Then I will open the brush panel, which has all the different brushes you can paint with. Sometimes when opening one panel, you'll see that there's other panel attached to them. You can simply drag them and close them. Then I'll open the layers panel and finally the color panel. And those are all the panels we'll need to start with. You can rearrange manually each panel and place them on your canvas the way you want to. For me, I like to have the color on top of everything, the brushes under that, and then the layers. But each panel can be moved and drag and dock to each other in each way you desire. So go ahead and open these panels if it's not already done, and you can close everything else. To make sure Photoshop remembers to open these panels each time we open the software, we will create ourselves a personalized workspace. You can do so by going over Window, Workspace, New Workspace, I'll call mine David, And now if you go on this top right icon right here and click on it, you should see your new workspace or if you go over window and workspace as well. Now during this series, we will go through all the panels one by one. But for now, let's talk about navigation. Now that we have a canvas in front of us, it's going to be important to know how to navigate. I opened three of my previous illustrations here to show you how you can drag and drop content from many documents. By clicking the name and dragging the canvas, you can detach the document and dragging it back will attach it back to the frame. I'll detach two of them and place them side by side. When the documents are side by side, you'll be able to drag images from one another with ease. It can also be particularly useful if you have a reference picture that you want to look at while drawing. Next, I want to show you how you can access the three different screen modes in Photoshop. This is the default one, where you can select the edge of your canvas and move the document side by side. By clicking on this button in the tool panel, I will bring you to the next screen mode. This is the full screen mode. If you press it again, it will bring you to the presentation mode. A small pop-up window will appear with a warning. You can simply click full screen. You can also change screen mode by using the shortcut by pressing the letter F on your keyboard. Knowing this shortcut is essential because in the presentation mode, as you can see, the toolbar will disappear. And so to get back to the first screen mode, you'll need to do the shortcut, the letter F. So go ahead and try it a few times, F, 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 and change the screen mode as much as you want. I'll press it one more time to get back to the full screen mode. The full screen mode is the mode you'll be working from most of the time. The power of this mode is that it allows you to move your canvas around and place it anywhere you want on the screen. So let's start with that. Go over your tool panel and click on the hand tool. If you can't see the hand tool, simply click and hold until the hidden button appears, then select the hand. Most tools in the toolbar have more than one button and you can see all of them by simply clicking and holding over the button. With the hand selected, you'll be able to move your canvas around by clicking and dragging it. So go ahead and try. Click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. Another essential skill here is to be able to zoom in and out of your canvas. To do so, you can select the magnifying glass in the tool panel right here. Once you have it selected, make sure that the top menu, the scrubby zoom, is selected. This will allow you to be able to zoom in and out by simply clicking and dragging your mouse or pen if you are using a tablet. In any software, you'll have shortcut. Using them is how you become a pro, so let's start using them right now. First, let's select a different tool here. Let's select the brush, as it will be one of the tools we'll use the most. Moving your canvas around, zooming in and out while painting will be essential, so this is the perfect practice. With the brush selected, hold spacebar on your keyboard. You'll see on your screen that the tool will change from the brush tool to the hand tool. And when you release the spacebar, you'll see back the brush tool again. This shortcut is essential. With it, you'll be able to move around while continuing using the brush to continue painting. So go ahead and try it. Hold spacebar, move your canvas, release spacebar, get back to the brush. Do it a few times. Once you feel comfortable, let's add a new shortcut. Again, with the brush tool selected, press and hold spacebar, and at the same time, hold command if you are on a Mac and control if you're on a PC to use the magnifying glass. 
And now you can zoom in and out by clicking and dragging your mouse. Once you release it, you'll get back to the brush tool to continue painting. So once again, this shortcut is spacebar and command if you're on a, on a Mac, and spacebar and control if you're on a PC. You can now, with these two shortcuts, the spacebar and the spacebar command or spacebar control, move your canvas and zooming in and out while continuing painting with your brush. I strongly suggest for you to use those two shortcuts and find the equivalent if you are not using Photoshop, as they will maximize your workflow drastically. So go ahead and practice them a little bit longer until they become second nature. And in the next video, we will add on to what you already learned and we will talk about brushes, erasers, layers, and much more. And that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget to download the files that comes with this mini-series so you can follow along. You can also click the subscribe button to make sure to not miss any of my future tutorials. And from here, you can click on the video below me where you can go to the next part to this mini-series and dig deeper into the subject of digital painting.